The first condition category we're going to look at is chronic tissue swelling. This is where the foot begins to swell up and can be different sizes in the morning than it is in the afternoon. Uh, you may it's yourself have experienced this if it's not a chronic condition for you when you've been on a long haul flight where you've got on the flight, your feet are fine, you sit down, you take off, pressure drops and you notice after an hour or so that your feet are beginning to swell and your, your shoes feel too tight and get, they're getting uncomfortable. So you might reach down and undo the laces or if that doesn't work you might take your shoes off altogether and then everything's fine and then uh, you get to the end of your destination, the plane lands, you go to put your shoes on and you can hardly do it or it's very, very uncomfortable if you can get your shoes on. That's an unusual situation and you think, well, that's because I'm on a long haul flight. For some people, that's their experience every day and that's where the word chronic comes in. This is something that they're having to live with that same experience you had on the aircraft, they have, they get up in the morning, their feet are fine, they put their shoes on, their feet begin to swell by the afternoon. It can be as much around here as, you know, 20 mil, an inch bigger. Um, and they've either got to undo their laces or um, uh, take their shoes off. So this is a, an example of a foot with chronic tissue swelling. This person has a problem with their waterworks, you know, something going on medically that the uh, dietitian is dealing with. Whatever's going on with their waterworks, their foot is going up and down, up and down, and uh, it's causing a problem with shoe fitting. If this isn't treated right, it can actually get as bad as this. This is full-blown lymphedema and you can see now the swelling is more or less permanent and the lymphatics in the leg are actually damaged so that the clear fluid part of the blood cannot be returned to the heart and the liver and so remains in the foot until there's just so much hydrostatic pressure coming from the blood that's being delivered that it just it goes back by simply by reason of the, the blood being delivered and that makes the, the whole area swell in quite a tension. Another thing you'll notice about the lymphedema if you look at the skin um, it's becoming very fragile. It's not being nurtured and replenished by the circulation because the circulation is so slow and stagnant that the uh, skin is becoming flaky, fragile, prone to ulcers. Ulcers can actually just erupt. It's called venous ulcers because of broken veins because uh, of the pressure. Um, and of course you don't want to make that worse with shoes and the shoe has to be uh, supportive and kind to the skin and also able to change shape as the foot changes shape. Here's another solution. This is a, lymph uh, a swelling caused by an industrial injury and this person has been uh, prescribed a, a compression stocking that's holding the swelling down but of course that in turn gives problems with foot fitting because the compression stocking is, is, is firm, it's still larger because it's containing a swelling, there's the industrial injury and so there's still foot fitting problems. And also the uh, compression stocking is uncomfortable and he's not going to want to wear it all the time. So he takes it off, what then happens with the shoe? Is the shoe able to accommodate in just normal stockings the up and down swelling and also uh, accommodate having the compression stocking. So what solutions do we have in terms of footwear uh, in, to, help, to help with this situation? Here's a foot that hasn't been helped and it's now got into a really uh, severe stage. The person hasn't been walking because of the condition, so perhaps they're comfort eating or whatever, but they've put on an enormous lot of weight. Their muscles have become weak because they're not walking enough. And now you can see the whole foot has collapsed. The swelling has got a lot worse. And the lax muscles mean that we have to create something like this. This is a cradle. Um, not made for this person, but you can see how it's made to the cast of the foot 
and so it's evenly supporting the weight and then you can see the bottom shape of the last allows the footbed to be supported and we can bring the ground reaction force up under there and support the foot. So that's the support strategy, but how do we then create the uppers that are going to allow uh, this foot to be covered? One uh, solution that uh, people with lymphedema will often find, particularly the ladies, this isn't really open to men, uh, in, well they could, but don't usually choose it, is that the bottom part of the foot, the toes and around the sides, are not subject to swelling. The swelling occurs around the ankles and on the instep under this part of the foot here. So if a woman can go out and find a pair of court shoes, because the court shoe only works around here. And from her standpoint, she looks down and she sees a lovely, nicely shaped court shoe and she can't see her swelling because she's looking from above. And so that's a great solution from her. But other people look from the side and what they see is a court shoe with a very swollen foot coming out around the vamp. So if that solution isn't available, say for a man or if the woman wants to go out in inclement weather or do any uh, situation where the, the, you know, a court shoe isn't the right solution, then they need to have something that encloses their foot, particularly if it's cold and in the winter. So how do we cover the foot in such a way that it is held and yet can still expand and shrink as necessary? And this is another chronic tissue swelling caused by 30 years of active rheumatoid arthritis. And you can see in this picture that the laces go all the way down and the shoe can expand and close as necessary. It's also very attractive colors and has flowers on it. The eye really goes much more to the applique, to the attractiveness of the shoe, relatively speaking, than it does to the swollen foot. This is another solution. This is swelling caused by a cancer which has affected the lymph system. So there's a huge variety of conditions that can cause chronic tissue swelling. And this lady designed this herself. We've made her a few pairs and we've also copied this design for other people. When you first see the shoe, you think, well, there's, an, you know, there's a pair of rather large but very nice slip-on shoes. It's got the, the bling, the brass bling, that looks just like, a, say, a Gucci loaf, loafer or something. And then what's actually happening, there's a gusset in there that can expand or shrink, and there's Velcro on either side. So she puts them on the, in the morning, tightens the Velcro right down, the gusset comes down on her foot, holds the shoe on, she walks around, goes about her day, and then as the day progresses, her foot gets larger and larger, she can reach down, undo the Velcro, and reset the shoe. So that's a good solution but not uh, actually very robust if she wanted to do a lot of walking. So what if we wanted to make a lace-up shoe? Well, here's a, a shoe for uh, quite a severe chronic tissue swelling. Not so bad as a disability, but it's certainly a big problem in terms of getting the fit. If we were to make a closed-facing shoe, like in Oxford, here's the vamp. The vamp is in front here, and that's all enclosed. And here's the facings. Well, because it's bespoke, you know, in the morning it's all done up. Here's your lace holes. And it looks good. You know, the facings come all together, but it's closed at the bottom. So as their foot expands around the instep, then what happens is the Oxford gets bigger. And you may have seen this. People with swelling, they've got an Oxford shoe that fits everywhere. Uh, except on the instep, and it doesn't look really very nice because it really looks, it just screams out, my foot is swollen. Another thing we can do is have a Derby shoe or a Gibson or a, a Navicat or a, a Blucher, all different names for very similar shoes, where it's got an open facing. So the facing's open at the top and the bottom, and so you can see here it is open, so even though it's 12, 15 millimeters wider than it was in the morning, uh, it still looks good. Uh, it still looks right. Uh, it just looks like it was designed that way. But of course, all of those uh, open-facing shoes are still closed uh, at the bottom uh, where the vamp is. 
If you look at this shoe, it's made for another condition, but it beautifully shows what I'm talking about. If the shoe was made for somebody with chronic tissue swelling on the instep, if it's done up in the morning, it looks fine. It's nice and closed, closed together, parallel. And if, you know, at the moment it's uh, 44 mil apart, supposing as the foot begins to expand and expand, and it still looks right. It doesn't scream out, I'm a sw swollen uh, foot. It just looks like the shoe was designed that way. But now it's gone from 44 to 84. So that foot looks good at 44 and it looks good at 84. It's accommodating 40 millimeters of expansion without uh, changing the shape and without losing function. Of course, with a shoe like this, also, if you take the pressure stocking off and you can do it up and it, it's got a nice cushioned tongue, that's an important thing. The tongue is cushioned, it's soft, and so you can do up the laces in the whole shoe if it's designed right. It can act a bit like a compression stocking, uh, but much more comfortable because it's holding the foot in a way that... Uh, you know, the compression stocking comes down and then suddenly it ends. And that end where it stops, the foot gets irritated, whereas the shoe won't do that. So that's a really good design for this kind of foot. Another thing is to have some soft cushion called a cushion collar, like you see on trainers. And that means that the upper quarter isn't pressing in to when the swelling begins to develop under the ankle, that the cushion collar still contains without hurting this, the swelling of the ankle. So those are all the tools we have. The cradle, the opening of the uh, lacing, the compressibility of the lacing, and uh, various other designs that can look right when the, shoe, the foot is smaller and when it's larger. The other thing we really need to look at are the materials that we're working with. Here we have a beautiful lining, a clotted cream lining. It's very soft. There's no chrome in there. It's designed to be up against skin, and it's a beautiful, soft leather. If you look at this lining, which we use uh, for shoes that need more support, we wouldn't use this on a quarters of a fell boot, for instance, but we might use this. This is much harder, it's firmer, it's great for other conditions, but it's not right for uh, chronic tissue swelling. So is choosing the, uh, the linings is important. Now let's look at upper leathers. This is a softy calf. It's got just a tiny bit of chrome, but it's mostly uh, a veg tan. And you see how soft it is. You can sort of crumple it all up. And the reason it's soft is that when it was first tanned, it was put into a big tumble dryer. It's very large. It can hold a number of skins, and it's it maintains a temperature that's right to soften the leather. And so it, the leather skins are put in there once they've been tanned, and they're tumbled for several hours at the right heat. And this begins to break down the hard fibers and makes it very soft. Of course, the other thing it does is it breaks down the sheen. You cannot get a shiny, softy calf. But that's good because with these swollen feet, you don't want to have a lot of reflective surfaces. If you look at this leather, for instance, this is one of the most expensive leathers we have. It's a, a cordovan leather from the United States, from Chicago. It's quite thick. It's about 1.4 mil thick. Beautiful feel to it, develops the most gorgeous shine, long-lasting, but not right. You know, so it's not a case of cost, it's a case of what's the right leather. So this leather would not be good for lymphedema because it, uh, it would uh, cut in it and it would uh, rub the skin. Similarly, if I pick up this piece of glacé kid, beautiful leather, you know, quite expensive, but again, it's got a, a sheen, and you can see on there that uh, the sheen is throwing up every little crease as I move it. And it's also quite crispy, so, so you can hear, as I move it, you can hear the sound of the firmer leather. So this, again, is not a good leather for lymphedema or chronic tissue swelling for two reasons. The reflectivity, which shows up all the uh, abnormalities of the foot, and the firmness is not going to adapt well to soft-changing foot. So if we look at this, this is a suede kid, so it's really the same skin, but it's uh, been tanned so that the flesh side, the, the suede side, 
See, there's the suede side on that. This has been uh, tanned to give a glacé gloss. This is being tanned to give softness, and some of the suedes are just beautiful for lymphedema and uh, chronic tissue swelling. And the other thing, of course, is it's totally matte. So if you see when I do that, you see the light glowing, you can see every little crinkle and curve I'm making. I can do that with the same thing, and, and you can hardly see uh, the crinkles and the curves. So these are the sort of things, the beautiful soft linings, uh, soft uppers, but you want something that's firm. You don't want something that's going to stretch and distort. So that's the toolbox we have for delivering uh, a, a very helpful shoe for somebody with chronic tissue swelling.